What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome bike to the channel. Welcome bike to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Big dogs. Gotta eat. This is our ranking video. Every week, I compute my rankings, put them up on the interwebs. They're up on bdge.store forward slash community. They go live around Thursday, noon Eastern time, meaning they are live right now. You can get them right there. So what we're going to do is run through my rankings. Like the six cups of coffee I've already had today ran through me. Like the NBA's run through the Kardashians. We're going to decipher. We're going to break down the ranked players that I have a wide discrepancy in, in terms of where the other experts in the industry have ranked these players on Fantasy Pros. This is championship week. This is big. This is big. So I'm going to run through as much as I possibly can. Y'all are good with it. You let me know when I've gotten things wrong, when I don't, I, you know, I'd be out here lying like half the time and you guys will be like, that's not correct. You didn't check that beforehand. That's a fa false fucking number. And I'm like, it's correct. Like last week I was talking about Michael Carter being on the COVID list. It was the other Michael Carter on the New York Jets. Had about 17 comments about that. It's difficult to know every single thing that's going on with 200 players every single week with all these COVID tests. I'm trying my fucking best out here. Let's tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling and let's eat. All right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to start off with the quarterback position for all y'all out there that are squirming about what to do, whether it's one quarterback or super flex, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, the biggest outlier I have this week, and this should come as no surprise to any of you, is Mr. Trey Lance. I have him, yes, this is going to be outrageous, but I have him up at quarterback 6. ECR has him at quarterback 15. They play against the Houston Texans. Trey Lance, very good runner. He's going to score fantasy points, and he's going to score a lot of them. I'm going to get a lot of questions about Trey Lance this week. And I am starting him if I have him. Obviously, assuming Jimmy G learns his role and sits the fuck down for week 17. I have Tyler Huntley up at quarterback 11. Now, there's still a lot of moving parts here. Does Lamar Jackson play? Does Tyler Huntley play? Does, you know, what what what's going on here? And I listen to a lot of injury podcasts as the week leads up to the Sunday. And I listened to Pro Football Doc. He said Tyler Huntley has a much higher chance of playing this week than Lamar Jackson. Tyler Huntley was activated off the COVID IR list, which means he is very, very likely going to play this week at home against the Rams. The Ravens defense cannot stop giving up points, which means the offense needs to go on the offense. And it's going to lead to a lot of fantasy points. So assuming Lamar Jackson doesn't play, he came back to practice yesterday, but you all saw the videos. He, the guy can't, he has one leg. He's walking on one leg right now. He's limping everywhere. And if Lamar Jackson can't run at full speed, there's no point of throwing him out there. So I think Tyler Huntley's going to play. We've seen him do nothing but make fantasy sex for the rest of y'all out there that have played him in previous weeks. So Tyler Huntley is also a QB1, a top 12 quarterback, assuming Lamar Jackson is out. Who else do we have here? Uh, Taysom Hill is the quarterback 12 in ECR. I have him at quarterback 16. Going against Carolina. Carolina is just a tough defense, man. Always. Like, week in and week out, regardless how shitty they're off. You think of Carolina now, and you're like, they're a mess. They're coach is fucking absurd their offense is really bad but their defense continues they're like they're like if everything went wrong with the Dallas Cowboys that's like still their defense you know like the Dallas Cowboys have good offense their team's clicking right but if none of that was working and they just had the defense that's like what Carolina is so I've Taysom Hill outside of the QB1 range for now same thing with Russell Wilson's I, I Russell Wilson I have him four spots below consensus as do I have Kirk Cousins down there at quarterback 21 they're playing at Green Bay really uh, it's been a tough pass defense that's, I mean, in Lambeau, it's a tough place to play. He will not have Adam Thielen, which just means 275 targets for Justin Jefferson. So he is much further down my ranking list than ECR, seven spots lower. All right, let's move to the flex, the flex, the flex, the flex. Antonio Brown, I have him up as wide receiver five, overall player number seven in half PPR, 14 spots higher than consensus. They're playing the New York Jets. They are going to throw up a ton of of fucking points we saw what happened when antonio brown was the only player to throw the ball to last week it resulted in a good fucking game 10 catches whatever 100 yards i'm expecting exactly the same against a much much easier opponent to throw the ball against antonio brown must start needs to be in your lineup this is nothing new for any of you guys to hear i have deandre swift who i'm assuming is playing he's been back at practice it's a great matchup against seattle i have him up as 18 overall RB11, which people haven't put him into their rankings yet, so he's 93 spots higher than consensus, but that's why. And right behind him, I have Rashad Penny at 
running back 12, overall 19th. Coming off of a monster game, so he has two clear games in the last three weeks. He is their clear workhorse. He's playing against Detroit, so this is uh, a, a game in which I want both running backs. I want DeAndre Swift. I want Rashad Penny. Rashad Penny's clear feature back here in a really good matchup. We're running both of those guys' bike. I'm also going back to the well on Gronk. I have him as tight end three, 27th ranked player overall, 19 spots higher than consensus. So I have him over, this is going to be a little controversial, but I have him over Aaron Jones in the flex rankings. I have him over Deontay Johnson. I have him over Ezekiel Elliott. Gronk, really disappointing last week. Uh, 11 targets the week before, also a disappointing game, though he's barely had any receptions, barely any catches. I'm just betting on the fact that, again, they're playing against the Jets. He is one of the only targets to go to in the passing game, and it's Gronk. He'll have his bounce back game. He has not reverted back to, you know, broken back, fucking no legs Gronkowski in New England. He's been what he's been all year. It just hasn't come together the last couple games. I expect it to be this game that he pulls it back together. So with those two guys being said, Aaron Jones, I have a 29th running back 14. 13 spots lower than consensus. I just think we've, I mean, we clearly have seen the split here with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, and it's that we don't really know what the fuck's going to happen other than they're both going to get, you know, 12 touches apiece. And if they don't get into the end zone, which Aaron Jones has done a good job of obviously doing because he's great inside the red zone and when they're in the five-yard line, 10-yard line, whatever, it's just the volume is not there. So it's hard to continue to trust this guy. So again, Aaron Jones is outside of my top 12 running backs. I have Devin Singletary, 10 spots higher than consensus. He is my RB 18. He's also clearly taken over as a workhorse back. He's playing against Atlanta. Great matchup. They're going to be like two touchdown favorites in this one. So he should get a ton of work. And his teammate, Dawson Knox, very much higher on consensus as well. It's becoming a theme. Each week, I feel like I have the tight ends overall higher. The, the high-end tight ends have been producing at a very high level this year. They've been producing at flex wide receiver, high-end wide receiver, like low-end RB1 type levels week in and week out. They're scoring so many touchdowns. Uh, so he's my tight end five, 38th overall in the flex rankings. A few spots behind him. I have Antonio Gibson down at running back 20, 12 spots lower than consensus. I think we saw last week, like, there's clearly something bothering him down there. He is not helping. Healthy. Uh, Philadelphia defense isn't necessarily one I want to run against. He also missed practice on today, I believe Thursday. So there's a chance that he doesn't even suit up for this one. So Antonio Gibson, like a girl with more than 5,000 Instagram followers, red flags galore. Boston Scott, I have up at 46th overall RB21, which is 34 spots higher than consensus. Miles Sanders is out, obviously. Jordan Howard dealing with a stinger. Again, you've probably heard me say this, but these stingers, medically speaking, I'm only technically a doctor, of course, but the fact the, the fact of the matter is, with these stingers, they either go away very quickly or they just linger on for a long time. Jordan Howard's already missing practice with a stinger, which tells me he's probably not going to end up suiting up in Week 17. So with the assumption Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders are both out, Boston Scott's going to get a big, big, big workload. He's a good pass catcher, going to get the goal line work with just him and Kenny Gainwell back there. They did sign Carrion Johnson to the practice squad, I believe, which tells you that they're almost definitely going to be without Jordan Howard. Uh, so Boston Scott... Not a must start. I have him down at RB21, but 46th overall in the flex rankings, 34 spots higher than consensus. I have Odell Beckham right above him at 45th overall against the shitty Baltimore secondary wide receiver 19. I think he's basically a must start in the wide receiver category. I have Josh Jacobs down at 25, which is actually 25 spots lower than consensus. And I was surprised to see this. I have him down at uh, running back 23 with Jacobs. The Raiders offense just is not running very smoothly, and the Indianapolis Colts are one of the toughest, if not the toughest, run defense in the NFL. So we could see high volume, we could see 20 touches, but like it might end up resulting in like 55 rushing yards, 65 scoreless rushing yards. So I'm not very confident in Josh Jacobs this week. I also have Javante Williams very far down compared to consensus. I have him 32 spots lower than consensus flex rankings consensus has him at 30 overall i have him down at rb 29 62nd overall so again not unstartable but we've just seen this backfield play out where we don't actually know the touch discrepancy here they're not moving smoothly with uh with drew lock under center they're not scoring a lot of touchdowns they should be relying more on their running backs but as we saw last game it didn't go well like he did get in the end zone but he rushed seven times for 12 yards and had eight receiving yards so this type of game is in the range of outcomes for a guy like Javante Williams and your championship week. Very tough to trust that. Chase Edmonds, 67th overall in my flex rankings, 27 spots lower than consensus. This is with the assumption that James Conner does play. He returned to practice. He's been dealing with this uh, heel injury. So I have James Conner up at running back 24, Chase Edmonds down at running back 31. So not unplayable, but at Dallas, 
Again, very, very tough defense to run the ball against. Chase Edmonds won't get anywhere near the workload that he got last week. I think he deserves a bigger workload, but they've shown that if James Conner's on the field, he's getting the majority of the touches. So in half PPR, I'm not too excited about getting Chase Edmonds into my lineup if James Conner is active. There's a few fluid situations here. The Buffalo receiving group is one of them, right? Isaiah McKenzie had the monster game. Now he's had a few of them in recent weeks and you kind of want to get him in there. But now Gabriel Davis and Cole Beasley both activated from the COVID IR list, which would move Isaiah McKenzie back to just like the weapon role that he's been playing. Problem with these guys coming off is like what we just saw. With I talked about this a couple weeks leading up to this. It's like when these guys come off the COVID list, you don't actually know how COVID affected them. You didn't know if they were asymptomatic. You don't know if they were dealing with actual respiratory symptoms because I've had it. A lot of you guys have probably had COVID. The ones of you that have had it and were not asymptomatic, the ones that had symptoms, it's very, very tough to do physical activity for a prolonged period of time, right? Like I wasn't able to really go to the gym and go hard for probably like a month and a half, two months until I recovered from COVID. Um, so Tyreek Hill said he was really, really tired on the field or Patrick Mahomes said, came out and said that shit. So I think you should have hesitancy starting guys coming right off the COVID list. Gabriel Davis being one of them. Cole Beasley, you're probably not playing regardless because he's been kind of unusable outside of just like random games that you're not gonna be able to predict. And he's coming off the COVID list and you know his ass is unvaccinated. So it might have affected him more so. Gabriel Davis is at my wide receiver 30 right now. 68 overall in the flex rankings. Atlanta, obviously stupendously tremendous matchup for a guy like Gabriel Davis and just this Buffalo passing offense. So you can absolutely get him into your lineups. He is playable. He is startable. But if you want to use a tiebreaker or something, that might be what I would look at. Uh, Josh Palmer and this Chargers receiving group is another one where they changed the rules from 10 days down to five days. So a guy like Mike Williams, who had basically been ruled out for week 17, can now get back into it. Jalen Guyton has been activated off the COVID IR list. Uh, Mike Williams remains to be seen whether or not he will. So if Mike Williams is not activated, I like Josh Palmer a lot. I have him up at 70th overall wide receiver 32 which is 22 spots higher than consensus i would be willing to start josh palmer in my flex in certain leagues if mike williams is not back from the list if he does get activated obviously you're not starting palmer you're not starting jalen guyton and those types of players so i have aj dillon 21 spots lower in consensus at rb34 i mean i don't know what you could have seen over the last like month or so since aaron jones has been back that would make you confident in throwing him in anywhere besides a desperate flex play van jefferson has not really been hitting a peak I have him down at 78th overall, wide receiver 36, 19 spots lower than consensus. But, I mean, I love Odell this week. I think Odell and, I mean, Cooper Cup's going to eat. Odell, I feel like, will have uh, a ton of targets and a ton of production. This could be a game where Van Jefferson gets back on track as well. We saw him have some really, really good games with Matt Stafford once Robert Woods went out. I just think Odell Beckham is the clear wide receiver, two in this offense. And, you know, you just play the odds. There's spectrums. There's like, it's not black and white. It's not necessarily like you don't, you can't play Van Jefferson anywhere. You have to play him somewhere. I just think the odds, if you look at the rates and the percentages of what's more likely to happen, Odell Beckham hitting or Van Jefferson hitting, I like Odell Beckham more. So I have him at wide, wide receiver 19 when I have Van Jefferson down at wide receiver 36. Again, very, very, very playable, but I haven't seen much recently that makes me super confident in him. Same thing with Devontae Parker, 18 spots lower than consensus, uh, put up a fucking donut last week. This is, you know, I've been saying it's so, 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 so obvious at this point. Anytime the Dolphins have their receiving group at full strength, Waddle, Parker, all the uh, Gesicki all on the field at the same time, we don't know how it's going to play out. If one of them, and we've seen this over the last like couple of years, they've usually dealt with these injuries in the pass ca catching group where like one of the main guys was out, which led all the targets to be funneled to another guy. And in this case, it's it's become Waddle, regardless of who the fuck's on the field. Hard to trust Parker. If Waddle was out for whatever reason, he's not going to be. But if he was, that's when you trust Parker. But you don't trust him when Waddle's on the field. I have Cole Komet, 43 spots higher than consensus, all the way up at tight end 10. Coming off a decent week, I think he was like four for 50. They get the Giants, so a really, really, really good matchup for him. And uh, I don't think Allen Robinson is going to come back from the COVID list. And if he does, he's not going to play. I mean, and listen, this is like during the summer right? Like when everybody's going nuts about how they're in the best shape of their lives and this is the best training camp they've ever had and they're as fast as they've been since fucking college or whatever, you throw all the positive reports pretty much out the window. But if there's ever negative reports, that is a glaring red flag because no one comes out and says negative things about players in the summer. It doesn't happen. So if they do, 95% of the time, it's true. If they came in out of shape, they're probably fucking out of shape and they're not going to be ready to go in the beginning of the season. With Allen Robinson, he came out and said that COVID is really, really affecting him. He's dropped 10 pounds. He's not going to be ready to play NFL football. We'll put it that way. So I am high on Darnell Mooney this week. I am high on Cole Komet this week. 
uh, in PPR leagues. I think they're going to get the majority of targets. David Montgomery is obviously a good start. So I like Cole Komet a lot more than consensus does at the moment. I got Braxton Barrios up at wide receiver 47. Yep, 96th overall in the flex spot, so 16 spots higher than consensus. I mean, he's going to get all the targets there, right? Elijah Moore, Corey Davis not playing. There's no one else to throw the ball to. I know this sounds ridiculous to tout Braxton Barrios in a championship game. I'm not really touting him. He's fucking wide receiver 47 or whatever. But Tampa Bay, they're going to have to throw the ball a lot, right? Because Tampa Bay is fucking two and a half touchdown favorites at this point. The New York Jets are not going to be able to run the ball. They're not going to be able to run the ball. They're not going to be able to run the ball. That's where Braxton Barrios comes into play. So if you're desperate, you need a flex spot and you can't find anybody, I think you could definitely do worse than him. And once we're getting down to like rankings 125 and, and below that, you're probably not in your championship game if you have to start one of those guys. So Braxton Barrios is the cutoff, right? Must start this week. If you don't get Braxton Barrios in your fucking lineup, good luck walking away with the championship. And speaking on that, I would say there's there's really one way to guarantee a championship in fantasy football. It's not by making the right sit start decisions. It's not by picking up the number one priority off the waiver wire. It's not eluding injuries and COVID list players. It's the, it's the motherfucking RJ. It's the RJ of all RJs. If you're in a championship game, you go into the group chat, you can personally text him, her, whoever you're playing against, and you tell them congratulations. You say congratulations on your win. No one deserved this championship more than you did. I saw how hard you worked this year. You made the right sit-start calls. You picked up the right players. You drafted better than all of us. You just got, you just got it. You've got the it factor. And I want to congratulate you from the bottom of my heart on winning our league's championship that my friends is how you win a fucking fantasy football championship by rjing the shit out of your opponent and before we leave you off here with parting words obviously if you want the remainder of the rankings all of them half ppr standard full ppr right here bdg.store forward slash community make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new we'll be doing a lot of fun stuff in the off season a lot of lifestyle stuff a lot of dynasty content stuff all all the good shit that y'all have already been hanging around Four, and I will leave you with the RJ of all RJs from last year's Go Fade Me Dynasty League Championship. Heavy, heavy underdog to my man Scott, but he's going to win this year. So, Scott, congrats on last year, and congrats on your 2021 Go Fade Me Dynasty League Championship. I love you, buddy. What's up, everyone? George here. It is September 9th. It's 5.30 in the morning. Really excited. NFL season starting tomorrow. I uh, just want to make a quick video and congratulate Scott on the upcoming win for our league the go fade me league probably gonna beat me and then he's gonna beat nick in the finals you know it's destiny nothing we can do so uh well deserved scott well deserved congrats scott you did it baby congrats on the chip scott congrats scott if anybody deserves it it's you i mean you're the best man i know the best editor i've ever met congrats scott you're just a dynasty workhorse i mean i couldn't think of a better guy to hand over my ring to scott congratulations man you did it it was 16 weeks in the making. I'm glad if I'm going to lose, it's going to be to somebody as dominant as you. Congrats, Scott. Congratulations, Scott. Scott, man. Congrats on the win. Can't think of anyone that deserves this win more. Congrats, Scott. Just want to send out my congrats to Scott. He went from shitty editor to the Go Fade Me champ. Well done, Scott. You deserve it. Congrats, Scott. Congrats, Scott. Congrats, Scott. Congratulations, Scott. Congrats, Scott. You did it, buddy. And nobody deserves it more than you. Hey, Scott. Congratulations, my man. Hey, Scott. Congrats, bro. You son of a bitch. You did it. Congrats. Congrats, Scott. The weekend is yours. I couldn't think of a better person to come away from this whole week 16 mess of championships with a fistful of rings. You're the new Tom Brady of fantasy football. You know what? Fuck you, Scott.